Hey there, name's Ahad. Are you like me and can't stop touching your face at work? And unless you're one of those idiots who's doing this toilet challenge everywhere, then you're probably trying to avoid Corona as well, aren't you? Well, I have great news for you because I have right here, the Corona Smacker. Oh, I'm always trying to sell y'all something. <laughs> so last week I created a short movie while I'm in this quarantine. Uh, I wanted to up my filming experience just a tiny bit. I created this short movie for the Corona Smacker, but I know that short movie catered towards, you know, the people who had short attention spans and people that need to just watch something entertaining. But listen, I understand, I'm a techie. I know you guys are out there. So so let's get started, come, come on. So we'll begin with the physical portion right here, but we'll try to be quick because I know you guys already seen the movie. Hopefully if you didn't go watch it and I know you guys want to see the technical portion. So we'll try to be quick with this. So right here we're using a DC motor, a 24 volt, 150 watt motor. And I need a big motor like this because these are kind of heavy. This arm right here is pretty heavy. It's not that, it's not as light as it looks. And I tried using a DC motor that had like 30,000 RPM, but quick tip, RPM does not equal torque. So it may be really fast, but it may be really weak. And uh, that may be the reason why it's so fast. But yeah, so this isn't as crazy fast, but it's definitely strong enough to spin anything that I put on it. So after I got the motor, I created the housing for the motor and the arm. So this bottom base part is just cut with a wood router and I use a jigsaw to cut a piece of the wood to make a square portion. And after that, I made the body and stuck the body inside of here and I'll put wood glue inside of there. And for the motor, I just connected the motor to the body using Gorilla Glue. This arm portion, is just a piece of a dowel and we have it taped with the rubber hand and then to counterbalance that hand we use a pvc pipe if we don't counterbalance it it'll just be wobbling crazy and i'll probably break and last but not least we also connect the raspberry pi zero w but we're going to be coming back to that because that has a lot to do with the software portion so let's get back to the software portion but before that can we get a like come on now that was some good nature we haven't had nature in so long. So now that we have the physical portion, we needed an AI version. But there was a little catch because I wanted you guys to try it out on your own. I wanted you guys to create your own smackers, do whatever you want with it, or run it while you're at work. I wanted you guys to be able to use it. So for that, I created a website made with React. And you can find that website at smack.ahotcove.com. And the cool thing about this website is look right here. See this little fave icon? See it smacking the virus? Come on now, that's pretty cool, you gotta admit. But anyway, since I wanted this to run on a website, I had two options. One, I could create a backend server that has TensorFlow running or PyTorch or Keras, whatever you wanna do, running in the background, and then you guys have your images being uploaded to the server every like 10 times per second. But do you know how much that costs? Instead, I had another option, TensorFlow.js. And boy, let me tell you, it's amazing. Going this route, you'll be able to use a smacker straight from your phone. You can have your phone sitting like right here just watching you and then doing whatever it wants in the background while you're at work or whatever you want to do with it. To be more precise though, we use the wonderful ML5.js that sits on top of TensorFlow.js to make things a lot easier. But this ended up coming back to bite me in the end. But we'll talk about that later. <laughs> now let's go to the website. Now if we look on the website, you'll see in the beginning we'll have the option to click anywhere to start. Now if we start this, you'll be able to see the camera come on and it will start classifying almost immediately. So now I think I'm touching. But that's because I haven't trained it on my new self right now. I trained it on my old self when I created that movie while I was wearing a different t-shirt, I had a different background. There's a lot of different factors that came into play on that movie. So that's why if you look into the nav bar here, you'll see this option called train. Inside the nav bar, you'll see train. If you click train, you can begin training your model from scratch. So I can pick start training, and then now I can say touching, 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 touching. Or I could click, or I can even just hit the keyboard saying not touching for left or touching for right. So I'm just gonna train on a lot of images of me touching. And I'm gonna train it on a lot of Im images of me not touching. So sitting back a little bit, you know, moving around. You want an even number of images. That's a general rule of thumb when you're dealing with convolutional neural networks. You kind of want an even number of hot dog slash not hot dog. So after you're done collecting images, you can click train. You'll see a loss up here. Once it gets to zero, you'll be ready to test. You can test now. And now it says right here, not touching. And now touch, touch, not touching, touching. And you may notice this is a pretty good classifier. You know, it's working pretty good. You know, that probably doesn't work in the right hand because I didn't train it on the right hand, but this, this is working perfectly. 
And you may be wondering, like, this kind of goes against the grain. It goes against everything you learned about machine learning. You're always told that you need tens of thousands of examples before you can have a decent model. But the reason we're able to make our model so quickly is because we're using transfer learning. And transfer learning speeds up the process by like a bajillion seconds. It makes things so much easier and so much quicker. The model that we're retraining is called MobileNet, which has over a thousand different classes. Since the model has so many classes to train on, it can better recognize what to look for in differences and features of an image. It's also state of the art. It's made by Google. It's extremely fast, pretty accurate, and you can even manipulate it. So you can say you want it a little slower so that it's more accurate or less accurate and make it even faster. There's, there's so many things that you can do with uh, MobileNet, and that's why we're using it today. You can find bigger models, heavier models that are more accurate, but when you have that trade-off between accuracy and speed, the speed is going to be way lower the more accurate you get. And it's also gonna be a heavier model. So, you know, for your project, choose what you think is best. So for us, we're sending these images around 10 to 20 times per second. So we need this really fast. So touch it, not touch it, touch it, not touch it. Now, after we're done training and testing, we click stop and now we're ready to save. This is the part where ML5 gave me a big headache. Up until this point, ML5 was beautiful. It was gorgeous. By default, when you save something in ML5, it tries to save it straight to your computer where you can save your model to a specific location. And then when you come back to the app, you can load your model up from that specific location. But I feel like that's not really user friendly. I wanted my app to be able to load immediately and save immediately without the user having to worry about today load the data or not. And I had to spend hours, literally hours, trying to fix this library up to make it how I wanted it to be. I learned a lot. I did learn a lot. Uh, ML5 really is handy. I feel like there's not just a lot of customization. That's mostly because it's community based and there's no real funding, I don't think, for it yet. I may be wrong now, I'm not sure. Anyway, after I learned the library and it was able to change some methods inside of the library. So when you click save, you'll be able to save this to your local storage so you press no and then it saves it to your local storage or you notice that pop-up you also have the ability to share it if you press yes right here it'll upload your model to the smack server now this doesn't upload your images so there's no need to worry about privacy it doesn't open all your ip address or your name anything like that you're welcome to view the network tab. It's just to make the global model better eventually. I wanted to make it automatically merge, but I couldn't rely on the client saying that this is a better model than the original. So instead we just uploaded to a folder and then eventually I'm gonna merge, start merging them in and testing them. At that point, hopefully it will be automatic. But yeah, please share. Let's create the best not touching, touching model that we can have. Right now we need it more than ever. And we have the website up. It's free. It's available for everyone. So let's, let's get this model working. So after you create your model and share it, you can go back to the home page and then you'll be able to start running your models. You click anywhere to start. You can click there. It'll start running. It says not touching, not touching, then touch it. Huh? Well, how do I make it do something when I actually touch my face? Oh, no problem. We have something for that as well. If you look at the top right of the website, you'll see this cog icon. If you click this, you'll be presented with an API screen. So you can say API off or API on. When the API is on, you'll be able to choose between two types. You could choose a sound file. So I click sound. You'll be able to select your audio file. So we'll click police siren. We'll be able to press done. And now it says not touching, touching. See that? And then the second type is an API. Now this is where the Raspberry Pi comes in. So yeah, so if you look at the Raspberry Pi 0W, we have a Python server running off of here. Now on the website, on the Smacker Cove, you can select whatever HTTP request you want in here. All my Raspberry Pis are kind of locked down with UFW. So I had to open up the port that I wanted to use here, send the API over to the Raspberry Pi, and I had to make the Raspberry Pi open up the relay when that API is called for about five seconds. But as I mentioned earlier, this motor is a 24 volt motor. So I don't really have batteries lying around like that. So instead I use my power supply. My power supply can support up to 30 volts and five amps. So I was able to run this, but I was only able to run 18 volts because this relay, I guess, can only take up to that much or it doesn't work anymore. And then that would trigger the swinging. It was trigger the slap after that. Literally all of this happens in less than a second, which is really crazy when you think about it. You gotta admit, technology is amazing. But yeah, that's kind of everything that comes into play with the Corona Smacker. Are there any other questions? Yes. Well, you have the code up on GitHub. Yes, yes, I have everything up on GitHub. Sheesh. God, I'll have everything up on GitHub by tonight. And feel free to submit a PR, you know? I wanna see how we can improve on this and see how we can actually use this as a community. If you would like to send me a demo, you can send that in the Discord or on Twitter, at Aha Cove. And once again, before we transition out to our end credits, remember the website is up on Smack? 
www.ihighcove.com. And check out the Corona Smack movie if you haven't already. Peace. I feel like it's been so long since we had one of these after credit talks. I hope everyone is safe and healthy. This pandemic is kind of crazy right now. I just want to say how grateful I am to my audience and my subscribers and my viewers and anyone coming from, you know, Reddit mostly. I wanted to do a one year celebration video, you know, thanking you all and everything and talking about everything that's come out of YouTube so far and just this small journey. And then the one and only NVIDIA reached out to me. They wanted me to do a sequel to the name stone and it's NVIDIA. Come on now, I can't refuse that offer. They wanted to sponsor that video. So I ended up making that video, um, had my friends come back. They were super helpful and awesome with that. But yeah, anyway, I want to say thank you all again for joining the ride. I'm still kind of a little shy and nervous when I'm behind the camera, but you know, trying, trying to get there. Eventually I'll get there. Yeah, I'm learning how to film a little better, how to talk, publicly speak. It's a lot of things overall that I'm just improving on with YouTube. I do not regret any of this. I'm still trying to find that fine line between entertaining and technical. It's kind of hard because I know there's a lot of people that want to see the technical side, but there's also a lot of people that just want to be entertained. They leave the video real quick. I mean, I also like doing the entertaining portions as well. Like that movie was really fun. I learned a lot in that movie, but the technical portion I want to do as well. I want people to actually know how to make their own Corona smacker and stuff like that. It feels so good being a small YouTuber right now because I can actually talk about Corona. I know big YouTubers can't really talk about it. That's a big positive <laughs> of being a small YouTuber right now. Anyway, thank you for watching. Join the Discord. Follow me on Twitter at Cove. I normally give sneak peeks on the Discord and Twitter about what video's coming up next. We'll even have a channel up just for the Corona Smacker if we want to try out the website and discuss different features and things like that. So come to the Discord for sure and then follow me on Twitter as well. And then if you want to kindly support me in this journey, there's always Patreon. You guys know Patreon, don't you? All the YouTubers ask for it. Why can't I get it? No, I'm just playing. But yeah, you can also support me on Patreon. And you'll be able to find all the links to my socials below. And as always, to end off, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and continue to embrace the spark.